Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. We are back for another interview. Now, thank you so much for watching these. Make sure you join us every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's Florida and New York's time. Today, we have an amazing guest. Now, how do, do I pronounce it? Samani? Samani. Samani. Okay. Now, you know my accent ain't going to be <laughs> awesome. How are you? I'm doing well. I am doing great. Today was my day off, so I'm happy. That's was okay. a last thing. That's amazing. Now tell me, say your name again and your last name and, and tell me the origin of it. So it's Samani is triplet, but in English you say Samani as triplet. So it's my parents' name combined together. So it's Samuel and Anne. So that's how I got Samani from my oh. dad. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's amazing. And now where are your parents from? Haiti. Really? Okay. Amazing. Both parents from Haiti? Both parents. I was born and raised there, and then I moved to the U.S. at the age of 14. Wow. Yeah. So are you bilingual? I am trilingual. Trilingual. Okay. I'm wow. working on my fourth. Working on my fourth. You know, I'll okay. get there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what three languages right now? So it's Creole, French, and English. Okay. And the fourth you're working on is? Spanish. Okay. I'm I understand sure. a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get it. Now, where and when did you bump into me online? Um, I used to watch you way back in college. Wow. I'm 28 yeah. right now. So it's been like 10 years. Yeah, about 10 years. Really? Wow. 10 years. Now, do you still watch the videos? I do. I still do till this day. Okay. Cause you used, it used to, I thought that meant you quit. No, 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 no. There's always something to learn always, especially relationship, which is something I love learning about goals, relationship, purpose. Those are the things that I get driven by. So I've always, I'm always learning. Yeah. Even in my free time, whether I'm cleaning or not, like I'm doing something. So, yeah. That's amazing. So now you're only 28 years old. Mm -hmm. and you're tapping into purpose and everything, I'm assuming. So let's talk about that. Now, what do you, first, before we go there, where do you reside? Um, I am located in Massachusetts. Okay. Now, yeah. is Massachusetts, is it is it diverse in Massachusetts? Is it a, a melting pot or is it kind of spread out? Um, I think it kind of, kind of spread out. I still don't like the state, so I can't really talk much about it, but that's my fourth state for now. So I'm just like, okay, let's do what we need to do. And then when it's time to go, we'll go to the next one. Okay. Now, what took you to Massachusetts? Um, after college. So I have my aunt and cousin living in that state. So I decided to move with them. Mm, okay. Massachusetts. Now, I like Boston. Um, I've been to Boston. And... We went there for, I think it was MIT, an event, uh, some type of a competition our oldest son had. Mm -hmm. And I, I enjoyed Boston. Now, how far are you from there? Um, about 45 to 50 minutes. Okay, so not bad. You know, Boston is a you know cool place, it seems. Now, what have you been into? Like, what do you do? What type of purpose work are you focused on right now? So I am a registered nurse. So I have my, I got my license. Today has made it three years, actually, since I got licensed. Um, and uh, I am also a life coach. So I got certified by Tony Gaskin Academy okay. in 2022, which I was very excited to do. And then in that same year, I decided to publish my book, um, Everything is Possible. So um, and then, um, yeah. In the meantime, I'm like either talking, motivating people, inspiring them. And then I like to do poetry. So I'm always writing. So whenever there's an, an occasion to like an open mic, I just go for it. Just to practice all my speaking, speaking engagement skills. Wow. So you don't consider yourself shy or are you shy and overcoming um, I can be shy in the beginning, but once I am comfortable, forget it. It's like the whole room. I got it. <laughs> wow. Now, where does that come from? Is it come from one of your parents or you just developed it in school? 
I think my dad, my dad is the same way. Yeah. Like he always loves speaking. He's actually a pastor. So I'm always like watching him doing it. When I used to be a kid, I used to be very shy. But then when I, I mean, I decided, you know what, ever since I moved to the United States, I'm like, you know what, I got to find my way because I left my mom and dad in Haiti. So I got to find my way. I got to speak up. I got to do something about that. So forget the shyness, like we'll get to it. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Now, RN, that sounds like a lot. You know, it sounds like a lot to accomplish, to become. Mm -hmm. What made you want more? like more than being an RN to become a life coach or author and just kind of be like this jack of all trades, what push you into that next stage of purpose? So when I came to the United States, it was because of an earthquake. So it wasn't something that I knew I was going to come here in the state, you know, so it wasn't planned. So when the earthquake happened, it was like, okay, school collapsed. There's a lot of things that are not functioning right now. Let's move to the state. So dad, mom and dad agree, and I'm here. So uh, after I saw the cause, the damage it has caused, so I was like, you know what? I used to live with an aunt that used to be a nurse. That's still a nurse till this day. So I'm like, you know what? I think I want to be a nurse. So me and my sister, we both decided to go for nursing school. Even though it was challenging, we made it in 2019. We both graduated, and my mom and dad were so proud. And then I've realized when I was in college, I used to talk to one of my friends and I was like, I don't think, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be there in nursing for too long. For some reason, I am, I, I like talking. I like writing. There's, it's like certain, certain things I'm like noticing about me and I'm like, okay, I got to pay attention to those things. So once, like that time I graduated college and my dad was like, I think you need to write a book about it. I was like, got it. That summer. Right after college, I moved here. I started writing, started writing. I was like, I don't know when it's going to be published, but I'm going to start somewhere. And I and then by 2022, I found someone, a publishing company. And I was like, let's go. Let's get it done. Author. And then I saw your Tony Gaskin Academy. I was like, you know what? In the meantime, let me invest. I saw everything as an investment. So I'm like, I am investing in my future. I am investing in my gifts and talents let me go for those things. So, and then that's how I was like, okay, let's do it. There's still some more things I'm discovering about myself and I am still willing to pay attention to those. But in the meantime, those are the things that I've accomplished so far. That's amazing. And now let me see your book again. And it is, everything is possible. And now tell me about that. Is it like a is it poems or is it a, a story, like a memoir? Is it self-help? So it's a nonfiction story. So it's based on my life journey um, coming from Haiti all the way to here. And the, the challenges that I had to face coming here, going through school, like financial issues. Um, and then um, at the end, the reason why I call it everything is possible because no matter what I have faced, I believe that God had made a way for me. I'm not saying I didn't play my part, you know, if, but God had done something miraculous for me at the end. And that's why I named it Everything is Possible. But at the end of the day, I know it's with God. Mm. So, so yeah. Now, you were in Haiti for 14 years? So 13 years and then 14 was after the earthquake. Okay. And so when you moved to America... And this is in the book, and I know people are going to read about it, and I know we'll, the book will go in more detail, but I'm curious, personally, when you moved to America, did you speak English at the time? No. <laughs> really? I did, not. I did not. So you came to America, 13 and a half or so, and you were speaking Creole and French? Yes. And then you learned English? Yeah. That is amazing because you you speak English better than I do. And oh, so thank you. <laughs> like, thank wow. You. Thank and, you. And and I love the confidence too, because you know, black Americans, we're not really given that type of confidence. We're not really taught that confidence. Like, for example, most of us, if we say, Oh, you speak English better than me, 
we'll be like, oh, no, 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 I don't. You say, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then, I'll receive it. Yeah. I'll receive it. And then just how you get on the stage. Mm -hmm. Now, what was it about, you know, Haiti that developed you? Like what, what attributes did you bring to America with you that you feel like you picked up, you know, from your roots, you know, being in another country? What gave you the resilience to come to America and persevere? To become an RN because I mean it's a lot of American. I I can't even become an RN and you, without facing the disadvantages or the things that you went through. So what was it you think that carried you as far as the the attributes that you had to exemplify to become an RN, become a life coach, become an author? It was uh, basically with my mom and dad. So I was a bad student back then in Haiti. Like, I didn't like to study till this day. It was a challenge. But when I got to the United States, it was more like, okay, let's let's leave everything behind. The old you, you are coming into this country full of opportunity. So you need to take advantage of it. And then because I left my mom and dad at a young age, and I saw like, okay, Haiti is not, you know, the rich country. It's a poor country. So... I'm seeing my mom and dad making effort to check on me, to make sure I go to college. So all these things, I'm like, no, I gotta make sure, like when they look at me and my sister, they have to be like, wow, these are the kids. I am so proud of them. So for me, this this is what built my confidence, seeing my mom and dad happy. Like even till this day, they're still over there. But every time they talk about me and my sister to other people, there's this joy in the, on their face. And that that makes me happy. That give me peace. So that's the reason why. So it's like when I saw here, United States opportunity. Let's go. Forget the laziness. <laughs> Forget not studying. I know you don't like it, but still push through. Mm, that's amazing. And your parents still live in Haiti. Yeah. And for those of us who don't know, like myself, I've never been to Haiti you know, how is it different? I've been to other places like, you know, islands and things of that nature. But, you know, how is it how is it different from Massachusetts? And so at, there's a whole lot of different things. It's like, nope, the power is not expected. It's not, it's, you know, I mean, it's not 24, ele 24 seven electricity all the time. So um, this is the reason why I'm like, you know what? You have power, you have food. And then when you're talking about insecurity, I mean, there's no, I mean, security, basically, there's no, um, you have to watch out whenever you're leaving your house, whenever you're coming home. Here, I can just relax and don't care. You know, I can literally fall asleep in my car and nobody, you know, really care about what's going on. So I'm seeing all these things. And then, um, and I'm seeing my parents, basically, they, they have, they don't have a lot. So that's the reason why I'm like, okay, there's not a lot of money over there. There is opportunity here. So I might as well make something mm. of it. You know, RN, I'm always teasing about RN money. And I, I have a lot of clients who are RNs. And in Massachusetts, for somebody who maybe they're looking for a career change, you know, what's like, what can a uh, RN earn in Massachusetts if you're willing to work 40 hours a week like what can an RN earn in comparison to you know the median income in Haiti like are you and your sister in a position to where y'all can send money back home we can but mom and dad don't expect us so <laughs> they, don't, they, they don't expect y'all to do not. they do not what they do not do they, they speak, don't do, they speak hmm? do they speak English? No, they don't. Because I wish I could talk to them. I wish I could <laughs> talk to them. And just because, like, Black American parents, if you make it, they expect money. They, you're supposed to take care of me. You're supposed to, you, I, you're supposed to help me. All I did for you, all I sacrificed for you. So you mean to tell me. And I want to hit on this because that's a stereotype. Mm -hmm. There is a stereotype that any person of color who comes from another country 
you got to send back all your money. But you saying your parents don't expect that. They don't. And why not? So I've noticed it in other of my family. There are other people that are expecting. But mom and dad, they know like, okay, Sam, I have a job. I am going to try my best to take care of myself. That's mom and dad. Both have a job. And then for me, the way that they raised us, if you want to give, you can. But they're not forcing you. Because they're working and I'm working. So um, so I like that because there's not a lot of pressure on me because I'm like, okay, I can. And that makes me actually want to give more, to be honest. Um, I want, like, I'm always like, okay, mom and dad, like, I'm really, this is nothing. What do you want? Like, you want this, that? I got you. Or if I can't, my sister will be like, I got you, mom. It's nothing because you've done so much for us. So, yeah. Mm, I love that. That is amazing. That's a word right there. Because I want to be one of those parents who don't expect anything from my children other than for them to take care of themselves mm -hmm. and be productive citizens. So that's amazing. Now, outside of the book, you are a coach. And mm -hmm. in your coaching practice, what type of clients do you like to work with? Um, those that have like a goal. Um, so most of them are usually single, um, but it's like, they have like a goal they want to get. So it's like plan A, that's where they at. And then they want to get to plan B. Mm. So that's where I help them. I'm not a personal trainer. I know I look like it. A lot of people think I am because I'm always at the gym and I love lifting heavy, but, um, because I'm not, I, I because I've noticed that I like to inspiring, motivate people. So I decided, you know what? I think coaching is the right path for that. So it's like a, it's like a basically a coach teaching like someone how to play ball, soccer, whatever sport it is, and then I'm like guiding them step by step. Right. So like an accountability partner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You helping them out. Y'all come up with a plan, make the plan, and you hold them accountable. Now I seen some of your posts and you are in the gym. And so I thought you were a trainer as well, but you're not a trainer. I'm not. Have I wanted you? to be one. Okay. I gave yeah. Hey, I'm like, well, not me. <laughs> now why why not? Because you could you could be like a personal trainer and a life coach to where y'all could do a 30 minute training session, then a 30 minute coaching session. Cause so I used to work at a gym. So that was like my first, first job in the Massachusetts. So I've been seeing a lot of trainers like every single day. So I'm like, uh, I bought the whole package and I never done in, anything with it. Wow. So okay. like, you know what? If you want to train with me, let's go. We'll train together. But for me to like literally teach you, I don't even know the name of the, those exercises. But I know what to do with them for some reason. I see. Okay, so you kind of could like lead a boot camp or like a little workout group. Yeah. And, you know, a group of women, but you don't have the desire to like go take the test and become a certified personal yeah. trainer, which I get it because that is a different ball game. It's even yeah. different than life coaching, you know, because trainer, you got to literally be like certified with the state because, you know, you can mess up somebody's back or yeah. neck or mess up their whole life. So that's different. So with your book, and that's your story, and what type of person you think would be good to read your book? Is it like somebody who's in school, like students or people who feeling depressed or just need to see somebody else's story to for extra kick of motivation? What's your ideal target audience for your book? So it's um, definitely college student. You know, any college student um, that are going through it or that don't know what college to go to. Um, immigrants, you know, anyone that came from a background that um, that they had a lot of struggle. But um, this book is mostly designed for someone that loves hope, you know, that's going through challenges and they still can't see the light at the end of the tunnel tunnel. So, and that's where I've always been seeing myself. And because I've noticed where God has taken me, I'm like, you know what? He's going to do it again. 
And because I know this, I am going to go back and help someone and remind them, you know what? You got this. God got you. Let's keep going. So mm. someone that loves hope. Mm. And you know what? Because, I mean, you, you said college students and things of that nature, but I, I'm really leaning on the someone who likes hope because I feel like it will definitely inspire me because I know with the journey that you've made, that you've gone through more than I've gone through and you've seen more than I've seen and to become an RN, which is extremely, extremely hard because you know I, I know people who they weren't able to become LPNs, which, you know, isn't, as hard as an RN, I know it's a different, you know, type of test or whatever, and it's kind of on the way, but, and not no disrespect to the LPNs, but to learn a third language, you took the RN test in English. Yeah. And see, that's what I mean. So it's like, I know Americans failing the LPN test. And so that right there, I feel like, it, it's a swift kick in the butt mm -hmm. for us to read your book. And I, I'm hoping everybody who sees the interview gets the book just so that we can see, because I feel like I know it's other, no, I have other interviews with people who have, you know, traveled from another country, but I don't know if they be got into the medical field, which is a tough field to get into. And I don't want you to sell yourself short on that book have you or do you still market it and promote it i still do um i actually because now i have more things on my plate i'm like wow it's getting too it's getting a lot but i don't see it like too too much i try not to think about it too too much it's just basically i feel like god is taking me it's like you going from one stair to another and it's like okay i am building your character and be, before I put you, I mean, I know everyone like the big stage and everything, but before I put you up there, let me, let me, let me train you the basic. Let me help you. So that's why I'm like, okay, God, give me the strength. Give me the grace. Help me, Lord. So that's how I see it. I actually want to give you a little bit, if that's okay. Like I, I want to share you a little bit of my introduction. Okay. That'd be great. Is there a situation in your life that got you questioning whether or not there is a God? Is there one that seems impossible to overcome? Does it take away your smile? Does it keep you up at night? Are you in need of a breakthrough? I wrote this book to encourage you because I can relate to feeling doubtful of change. The obstacle you might be going through may be different than mine, but still, you're not alone. We all face one, but it's up to you whether you want to have power over it or let it control you. It's up to you to get back up again and try again. It's up to you to encourage yourself. It's up to you to believe that there's hope again. It's up to you to believe in how much God cares about you and want to fight any battle for you. Whatever you believe or whatever your feelings in this moment, I'll tell you. It won't change who God is. It won't change the way he thinks of you either. It also won't make him love you any less. So, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Now, you got to forgive me. I'm just, me personally, I'm just in awe that this is your third language. <laughs> that, that's what's throwing me off. <laughs> because as I'm listening to you, I'm like, man, imagine me writing a book in Creole. And then reading it in Creole and then going and doing spoken word in Creole. I'm trying to picture that or in French. Yeah. And so the inspirational part about what you're doing is you're showing all of us just how powerful the mind is. Yes. And in addition to that, how good God is when we yeah. trust him. Because it's a lot of us that's selling ourselves short and underperforming with our one language. So mm -hmm. to see you speaking three, working on a fourth, 
and then to be in a very tough field of being a registered nurse, but also becoming a life coach and taking the certification, not just jumping out there, but actually going and being a student, taking the certification and then becoming a coach. And you're only 28 years old. And so that's just an inspiration, Samani. And I, I just really thank you for being a light and for stepping out there. And I wish you could bottle that confidence and sell it because, you know, we need it. And so I'm, I'm praying that God continues to encourage you and strengthen you and bless you. Thank now, you. where can people get your book? So they can get my book on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles. So, um, so mm -hmm. Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble.com. And what about coaching? Are you accepting clients? I am. I actually it's through Tony Gaskin Academy. Um, my mentor that life. My that mentor was. that life. Okay, <laughs> awesome. So, so yeah. Awesome. So y'all check in the description box for the link to her book and also the link to her coaching. And even if you, you might, we might have people watching this that you younger than they daughter. <laughs> and <It's> so okay. <laughs> y'all just, even if you feel like you don't need a coaching session, just book a session to be a blessing to her. Just to say, keep going. You 28, you doing this. Just book a session and write in the session. Don't need the session. God bless you. Or just get on the phone and just talk and get some inspiration because that's inspirational what you're doing, Samani. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at the whole the whole goal, you know, the big vision, the five year, 10 year, however far you think, what is your ideal career? Like what what does that look like? What's the ultimate goal? I think it's taking a different route right now. Um, I am, for some reason, I am seeing myself more like a business. I don't know. It's just now, like, I don't even know how to explain things I didn't really pay attention that much. It's like now it's in the back of my mind, um, like investing. I also see um, any like platform, like different platform of speaking engagement. Um, that's certain things. Those are the vision that I've been seeing. I also have like a vision board for some reason. I've always had it since 2019 and it has like the mic. It also have like poor um, little kids from Africa. Cause I want to go around there around the world and help. And that's the reason why I became a nurse. And then I also have nursing, which I accomplish. And then, um, and different things that, um, and more books, definitely more books. Mm. Like I'm always writing, always writing. <laughs> That's amazing. And you know what? Writing is something that you can do every day. There's no limit. There's no cap. You know, it's an art form. So I encourage you to keep doing that. And when I was your age, I was trying to publish a book every 12 months. And that's, I'm, I'm, I think I'm almost to 20 books published, but that was the goal. And I started when I was 22 and I'm 40 now. So I'm still averaging about a book a year, even though it's not, you know, a book a year because I wrote some shorter books, some eBooks. And, I, and one year I wrote like four eBooks, published like four in one year. And I just encourage every writer, if that's your passion and or your gift, just keep pumping them out there because it's just a portfolio. And one day someone is going to find you, look your name up, and just be able to sit and read, you know, for days what God has spoken through you. Mm -hmm. So keep going, keep doing that. To everyone who is watching this, make sure you support our sister. Also, lock in, set your notifications every Sunday, 9 p.m. Samani, so thank you so much for joining us mm -hmm. and for sharing your gift with the world. And we are wishing you much more success. God bless you. So much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>